We as an entire society need to rethink our relationship to media. History will show that big tech and big social media companies are worse than big tobacco. The world has changed a thousand times over. The internet has changed 10,000 times over. There is no way we can continue to use a law from 25 plus years ago to protect our kids in the internet of today. Julie, we are here in front of the Meta offices today. You are the founder of MAMA, Mothers Against Media Addiction. Can you tell me a little bit about your background and how you started this organization? Sure, I'm a longtime journalist, but before I became a journalist, I studied something called media ecology, which is a very funny name, but it's an attempt to describe the way in which media environments shape human perception and society. Mothers Against Media Addiction, or MAMA, is a new grassroots organization working to fight media addiction in kids and teens and create a world where children experience real life things and interaction at the heart of a healthy childhood and not a phone-based childhood. So we held a rally today in front of Meta to draw attention to the fact that we as parents, as adults, as, as allies, as educators, as doctors are sick and tired of the status quo. We are sick and tired of social media companies exploiting kids' emotions for profit. And we're sick and tired of our government not putting basic safeguards in place. We don't allow toxic things in our food supply. We don't allow uh, we don't allow toys that are unsafe to go on the market. Last year, there was an electric skateboard that resulted in four deaths and there was an immediate recall. How many more children have to die or get harmed before we say, no, social media is not safe for kids? The term media addiction is really interesting to me because the current conversation of the past five years, I would say, is phone addiction you decided to go even more granular and talk about media addiction. Can you explain that? You know, I actually think it's broader instead of more granular. I think we as a society are addicted to media and technology. We seem to think that every time there's a new technology, a new app, that it's going to save you, that it's going to save the world. There are some people who just think technology is like the ultimate answer to everything. I love tech. Tech can be helpful, tech can be fun, but it's not always the best solution and it's not always an improvement over existing technologies. And so what I see is that we as a society have allowed screens to infiltrate every part of our life. And with 24-7 information coming through the internet, coming through social media platforms, our brains and our bodies are just inundated. And it's not healthy. The human brain cannot actually process that kind of information. And it's too much for anyone to bear. And it's way too much for children to have to be exposed to. There's, for example, a Twitter account that I keep up with called Pessimist Archive, and they bring up the scares over TV consumption, the scares over video game consumption, and how this just seems like it's going to be that again. And to me, it's like we don't even fully know the effects of our media consumption. It is still so new in terms of human history. How do you look at that? The people who think, you know, this is just pessimistic, cynical, what do you say to that type of conversation? Well, they're completely wrong. And the reason they're wrong is because they're failing to consider the overall environment in which this technology has been introduced. Um, when rock and roll was introduced, parents were nervous, right? And rock and roll was something that teenagers listen to in a small amount of time in the context of a society where they were still spending most of their hours with their family, in their community. Americans were closely connected through community organizations. They went to church. Now we are in a totally different type of environment where people are getting vast quantities of their interaction through the screen and not in real life connected human relationships. And so what's happening is we've actually displaced behaviors and experience that are critical for social and emotional health and we've replaced them with experiences through the screen that are training our brains to be socially and emotionally incompetent. We have literally rewired our brains to not be able to indulge in deep thinking and we are seeing the effects in our um, our country's reading and math scores, which are now at the lowest levels they've been since we started measuring in 1971. 
I mean, we are doing this to our children and we need to stop. Yeah, I saw someone shared on Twitter yesterday that they've been working, you know, this rising loneliness problem. And they're like, the biggest bottleneck, because they're trying to do like in-person events, the biggest bottleneck is that people can basically self-medicate in a way with just yeah, constant content consumption. And they're like, okay enough with staying inside doing that rather than the hard part of it. Just like when we're first talking, it's a little bit awkward. You know, people, that energy, like people just want to sit back, relax, consume content all the time. Part of why I was sort of moved to start Mama was because after I reported on suicidality in young children, I started getting calls from parents every week because their children were depressed, their children had self-harmed, and also, I mean, there is a epidemic of young adults who won't leave their house. They don't go to school. They don't want to get jobs. And it's because all of the time spent on screens has actually taught their brains to be passive. And so it's a real insidious problem and we need to tackle it. So of course you can't be multiple places at once. Today we're focused on being in front of Meta. Do you plan to do rallies in front of YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, all these other social media companies? Why the focus on Meta? All social media companies need to step up and do the right thing for children. And even more importantly, our government needs to step up and ensure that basic safeguards are in place the same way we safeguard our food supply, the same way we safeguard driving. We require people to pass a driver's test before they get a license. We require car manufacturers to monitor how much toxic exhaust they can put out in the air. You know, I think it's okay if my kids hear some bad lyrics and if they see some bad things. That is part of growing up. I'm not trying to make sure they never ever see pornography or that it doesn't exist. I'm trying to make sure we're not mainlining it to our 10 year olds. My last question, because we're at 2%. Great. Okay. What would success look like for you over the coming weeks, months, years for your organization? So success would be if mama doesn't need to exist. Um, it's a shame that we have to do this. It's a shame that we have to bring everybody's attention to the plight of children in this country. Children deserve to be healthy. Children deserve to play. We need to put an end to the phone-based childhood. Jonathan Haidt talks about going back to a play-based childhood. We need to restore some balance and order in our society. And I think a critical first step will be ending media addiction. The Safe for Kids Act, the Stop Addictive Feeds Exploitation for Kids Act, puts an end to this harmful practice, offering children and teens an alternative feed filled with the content that they choose to view, not what the apps assume they should be seeing. They want to follow their friends? They can. They want to follow their families? They can. They want to sign up and follow the Taylor Swift fan page? They can. They want to get resources and information from the Trevor Project page? They can. Nothing in what we are proposing changes that. They just would not be exposed to the harmful, addictive algorithms. To learn how you can get involved in this effort, please visit wearemama.org and sign up. The time has come to put an end to media addiction and phone-based childhood. With your help, we're going to give children everywhere the childhood that they all deserve. Thank you.